Let's talk Sims 4 tips, tricks, and secrets that pro simmers do that you might not be doing. It's a brand new game. You've made your sim, you spent hours in build mode, or maybe you just selected a starter home to start off with. I'm not judging you. You've successfully avoided the welcome wagon, and you're ready to play. But now what? If you want to start this playthrough on the right foot, I recommend doing these five things to take your game to the next level. Similar to what you see pro sim players do on YouTube. And talking about pro players, there's actually one other thing you can do to become one. If you're looking for the best gaming deals, then look no further than Instant Gaming. They offer amazing discounts on a wide range of games, including popular titles like Sims 4 DLC. Plus, when you use my link below, you not only save money, but also support the channel, as I receive a commission from your purchase. So help yourself to some great games and help support the channel. Thank you so much if you do. Now let's get to the good good. The first thing you should be doing, even before you're done in create a sim, is to make sure you're picking the right aspiration. This is something we've talked about before in my super sim series, but it's worth mentioning again here. The bonus trait your sim gets will depend on the aspiration you select. So basically, choose an aspiration based on this trait, even if the aspiration isn't something you plan on finishing. Or even wanted. If that's the case, don't worry. You'll be able to select a brand new aspiration once you're done in cast, like this. Changing your aspiration after initially creating your sim will not remove that bonus trait. That is your bonus trait to keep forever. This bonus trait can prove to be helpful if you're looking at doing particular things. Like if you're trying to become a musician, you might want to use this one. Or if you simply want your sim to build skills faster, then this might be for you. Similar to bonus traits, you can earn traits through completing aspirations. This might be a good thing to work towards as you play. I highly recommend looking through the aspirations to see which ones your sim could benefit from. All right, so you've made your sim and now you're in live mode. What do pro simmers do next? They make sure their game settings are set up the way they like them. To do this, go into the game menu, go to game options, and click on gameplay. This is where you have a few options regarding your gameplay. For example, you might want to turn off autonomy or disable it for the selected sim. I do this. I never have it on. You also have the choice to turn off auto-aging for played and unplayed sims, and you can adjust the sim's lifespan. Depending on your computer and how well the game plays, I recommend to increase the maximum sim count. This is especially useful if you know you're going to be playing with many different households on this save. These options over here are honestly personal preference. Another thing you might want to turn off would be neighborhood stories. Turning this off will prevent your neighbors from adopting a million cats or from breaking up and remarrying. I mean, neighborhood stories is a good idea but in actuality, it is a hot mess. Something I always do right away would be increase the season's length. This is only possible if you own seasons. But yeah, essentially I like the longer calendar years and longer seasons. I feel like it fits better with the longer lifespans, which is what I always set my lifespans to. While you're here, make sure you disable temperature effects on sims, if that is something that annoys you. The temperature effects will make your sims very, very, very annoying because they're constantly complaining about the weather. In addition, you get to select rain and snow options. This might be helpful if you find a particular weather to be frustrating or maybe your computer simply can't handle it. One last setting I'd recommend going through would be pack settings. There might be options here that you can enable or disable that'll make your game that much more enjoyable. You've made your sim, you've gone through the settings, and maybe you've already selected a career path for them. It's time to think about hobbies or side hustles. You gotta fill your free time with something. There are many different activities that could be transformed into a side hustle. In fact, there are so many ways I've made a few videos focusing on weird or unusual ways to make simoleons. You can find that playlist at the top corner right now, or you can click the link in the video description. However, if that's all too involved for you, you should go back to the basics. Painting, writing, or gardening. Out of those three, I think that gardening is the least involved and therefore the easiest method. It really is simple. 
Go into build mode, purchase one of these seed packets, open it up in their inventory in live mode, place the plants down, and get them to plant them. It's good to keep in mind that herbs will grow faster than fruit or vegetables, but fruit and veg sell for more. You can have your sims plant them directly into the ground, or you could purchase a planter box for them. If you have cottage living, you could even purchase this and plant something here as well. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter what it looks like, just get those suckers planted. Now is a good time to focus on what you can do in build mode to help with your gardening side hustle. Right away, you're going to want to add some beneficial lot traits, like homey, which will give you a 50% boost to your gardening skill gains, and you'll receive a happy moodlet, or great soil lot trait. This trait is only available with city living. Great soil will increase the rate of plant growth by 10% from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Another good lot trait includes study spot from Discover University, which will give you a slight bonus to all skill building. If you want to go extra ham on the gardening and you own tiny living, then I recommend doing the following. If you like your house, save it to the library on the gallery, then delete it. Like delete it in game, not on the gallery though. Change your lot type to tiny home residential. Create a tier one micro home. With this, you unlock all of these great lot perks. The one that we care about is let it grow. All garden plants on the lot grow twice as fast. Hello, that's amazing. If you decided to keep autonomy on, you'll notice that your sim will automatically take care of the plants. If that is simply too slow for you, or maybe you just don't want your sim doing it, you can always speed things up by creating a gardening club. This is only available if you own get together. It might just be your active sims in the club, or perhaps you want to rope in other sims. Either way, set up so the club activities include gardening. As your sim levels up their gardening skill, you might notice that some of your plants are sparkling, like this. This means you can evolve it. Evolving the plant will increase the quality of it, and the higher the quality means more simoleons. There are other things you could do that would help with your gardening side hustle, like purchasing and befriending the bees or Patchy the straw man from Seasons. Both the bees and Patchy will eventually help with gardening. With Horse Ranch, you can own mini goats and sheep, and they will help take care of your plants by eating weeds and bugs around the crops. So that's a win-win because they're cute and they help out. When it's time to harvest, you can click on a plant and select sell all. As your game evolves, or if you reach your financial goals, you can always slow down on the gardening side hustle and revert back to a residential lot if you've changed it to a tiny home. At the end of the day, gardening is a great way to start off making lots of simoleons without a lot of time spent on it. Maybe you've just done all of that and now it's time and you're rebuilding a proper full-size house or perhaps you never went the gardening route and you're in build mode, then I urge you to pay attention to the cost of each item. It seems like it would make sense that the basic items would be the cheapest, right? Wrong. Wrong. Base game items might be the ugliest and some of the more expensive pieces featured in the game. If you're looking at creating a beautiful but inexpensive home, pay attention to the cost of each item. You'll find things like this, where this item looks better than the base game equivalent, and it's cheaper. Don't be fooled by the logic that base game items or uglier items automatically means cheaper. It is simply not the case. You might have seen those posts online where the simmer is upset that their sim has gained a bunch of weight over time. Unfortunately, that does tend to happen because of how the weight mechanics are set up for the game. Unless your sim is exercising daily, then they're going to be gaining weight. I actually recommend having some sort of exercise machine like the treadmill in your sim's home. Not only will it help with the weight gain, but it's great for dealing with negative emotions. If you're not into having a bulky item take up floor space, you can always make sure your sim is going for their daily jog. This is another thing that'll help clear negative moodlets. Long story short, if you're too lazy to remember to exercise your sims, like me, you can always get them to eat garden salad and only garden salad. Garden salad, for some reason, has no calories, so you don't need to worry about your sim gaining weight. When you do cook, make sure you're selecting the party size. Once the meal is completed, you can drag and drop the remainder of it into the fridge. When your sim gets hungry, choose to grab leftovers. They might just do this automatically as well. This is a handy tip if you're not interested in spending time cooking all the time and would rather batch cook every so often. With the movie hangout stuff pack, you'll have access to the popcorn popper. 
This is very handy since it seems like all Sims will autonomously pop some popcorn or grab a snack of freshly made popcorn whenever they're feeling a little hungry. And this includes toddlers. Toddlers can in fact utilize this. Of course, they can't make their own popcorn, but they're able to grab it when it's ready. A similar pack, Cool Kitchen, has several interesting ice cream effects. The two that deal with weight would be Weight of the World ice cream, which will increase the speed of weight gain. Eating more than two cones or bowls will cause Sims to gain weight. And Taste of Diet, which will increase the speed of weight loss. Eating more than two cones or bowls will cause Sims to lose weight. Now there are several other ones that you can explore if you wanted to, but all of the other ones will deal with giving you a moodlet or turning you into a plant sim or giving your sim different visual effects. Disclaimer, I don't own this pack and I don't have experience with Cool Kitchen. My final tip as you go about your playthrough would be to pay attention to those small details. A small detail that might get overlooked would be purchasing things from the reward store. These potions and traits are very handy to help you manage your sim's needs or emotions. Be sure to pay attention to what the game is telling you. If you see the option to cry under the covers for your sad sim, then go cry under the covers! This will help speed up their sad emotions so they deal with it in less time. Likewise, if your sim is feeling flirty and you make heart-shaped cookies, it'll boost your emotions so you stay flirty for a longer time. If you're looking for social interactions that can help massively raise your friendship levels with other sims, then here are a few that are really great for that. Taking a photo with that sim, be sure to take every photo that you can, all five of them. Playing chess with them, adding someone and messaging them on Social Bunny, cloud or stargazing, or play Don't Wake the Llama. If you own Seasons and there's a holiday with a thankful spirit, be sure to send out a thank you card to that person in the mail. You can even send it to other sims in your household if you wanted to. This action can actually be spammed. You can do it several times in a row if you wanted. Doing it will help boost your friendly relationship with them massively. And you can even create holidays that have the thankful spirit just to do this. It's pretty awesome. There we have it. Five tips and tricks that could help elevate your gameplay. I hope you enjoyed them. And if you know anything that could help out your fellow simmers, like more tips and tricks, please let us know what it is in the comments section. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. You're awesome. And I hope you're having a fantastic day. Keep being you and stay happy, healthy, and hydrated. Go drink that water. Until next time. Bye. bye.